foreign banks that were derivatives counterparties of AIG, plus Goldman Sachs. This is the biggest swindle, not only in the history of the United States, this is the biggest swindle and transfer of wealth in the history of the Western countries. And we've seen all these cronies from Wall Street uh, with the combination to the vaults around the country and they've uh, just looted the, the Treasury and the banks and, and uh, the securities industry dry. This is by probably an order of magnitude the biggest fraud in, in history. Over the next 10 months, 23.7 trillion was stolen from the U.S. Treasury. The gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. McHenry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, uh, the tune of $23 trillion, $700 billion worth of taxpayer exposure for the bailouts is quite striking. The calculation right now is that with Obama, we've got $24 trillion as a line of credit available only to Wall Street banks, insurance companies, credit cards, um, mutual fund companies and others, but only financial institutions. Twenty-four trillion dollars of money from the Federal Reserve, from the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and from the Treasury in the form of the bailout of October 2008. The Federal Reserve, the private holding company for the offshore banks, arrogantly told Congress and the American people that it was none of their business what the private banks did with the people's money. Uh, one very interesting exchange, Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont asking Bernanke, we have given upwards of $2 trillion to various financial institutions. You've got to tell me, where did the money go? And Bernanke simply stonewalls and says, I won't tell you. And who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks, any bank or that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. You tell us who they are. No. Do you have to be a large, greedy, reckless financial institution to apply for these monies? There is no subsidy. There is no capital involved. There is no gift involved. It is a collateralized, short-term liquid loan that is both over-collateralized and is recourse to the company itself. We have never lost a penny doing it. And how can other institutions make, get, get uh, those loans as well? According to the law, we are supposed to be lending to depository institutions. Let me just say this, Mr. Chairman. I have a hard time understanding how you have put $2.2 trillion at risk uh, without uh, making those names available, those institutions public. And we're going to introduce legislation today, by the way, to demand that you do that. It is unacceptable to me that that goes on. Behind me, the Federal Reserve... Uh is probably the least transparent agency in the federal government. One could even argue that the Central Intelligence Agency is more transparent than the Federal Reserve. The fact is, is that the American people want to know more of the secrets of the temple, as the book was uh, before you were born, the secrets of the temple. <laughs> the Fed, as you know, is just a monopoly by the bankers. This is simply putting the fox is in charge of the hen house. Personally, I'd be in favor of Congress just nationalizing the Fed and, and getting the bankers out of there. They're, they're, you know, they're just stealing from the American people, put it directly in the hands of Congress and, and let Congress decide, uh, rather than this cabal of uh, bankers deciding their own rates of profit uh, at the expense of the American people. Since the Federal Reserve's creation in 1913, patriots have labored tirelessly to alert the American people to the true nature of the Federal Reserve. Throughout its 90-plus year history, most Americans falsely believed that the Federal Reserve was a government agency. But today, scientific opinion polls show that the vast majority of the public is aware of the fact that the Federal Reserve is a front company for an offshore private banking cartel that dominates not just the United States, but almost every other nation on Earth. It's never been written about in any book that I've found as to who gave these guys the authority or permission to be the international bankers for the world. Why would you even need international bankers? Why would any government agree to, to use them? Why would you need to use them?
Why can't any country create its own money? It tells you there was already an existing superstructure, already in existence, maybe two, three hundred years ago, to give these guys permission to somehow be the overlords of all money for all countries. Polls also reveal that 75% of Americans demand a public audit of the secretive organization. By the summer of 2009, Congressman Ron Paul's bill to audit the Fed had gained more than 280 sponsors in the House. But the private Fed's high-powered lobbyists were able to block a vote on the bill in the Senate. That only piqued the public's interest. I have another amendment. Um, I have been informed by the, that the majority plans to block consideration of uh, this amendment, which is number 1367, regarding the transparency at the Federal Reserve. Madam President, I'd like to call up Amendment 1367. Without objection, the clerk will report. The Senator from South Carolina, Mr. DeMint, proposes Amendment number 1367. Senator from Nebraska. I make a point of order against the DeMint Amendment that it's legislation on appropriations. Madam President. The point of order is well taken. The amendment. I, I regret the objection. The amendment falls. The people began asking themselves, why couldn't there be an audit of the Federal Reserve? The Fed has never once been audited. In the whole period of time, in the almost 90 some odd years that the Fed has been around, the most powerful agency and independent agency, it has never once been audited. This is an absolute crime against the freedoms of this country. Do you think it would cause pr uh, problems for the Fed or for the economy if, if that uh, legislation was to pass? My concern about the legislation is that if the GAO is auditing not only the operational aspects of our programs and the details of the programs, but is making judgments about our policy decisions, that would effectively be a takeover of monetary policy by the Congress. Is that your position that uh, uh, this bill, if it were to be passed, would interfere uh, directly with uh, interest rates? setting interest rates? If we were to raise interest rates at a meeting and someone in the Congress didn't like that and said, I want the GAO to audit that decision, wouldn't that be viewed as an interference? I, w I wouldn't think so. This is just reviewing it and you can do what you want. The Federal Reserve has never been subjected to an outside audit. And if you audit them, it's very likely that Greenspan, Bernanke, and Volcker might all go to jail. It was announced today, earlier today, that there will be a hearing on H.R. 1207, the bill to audit the Federal Reserve Bank. This will be the first independent audit in the Federal Reserve's 96-year history, and it's long overdue. Months ago, I asked the Vice Chairman of the Federal Reserve who received the $1 trillion in funds that the Federal Reserve has handed out to domestic institutions. He said, I'm not going to tell you. And then more recently, the Chairman of the Federal Reserve, I asked him who receives the half trillion, we're talking about $500 billion that the Federal Reserve handed over to foreign central banks. Who did they disseminate that money to? And he said, I don't know. Half a trillion dollars, and he doesn't know. It's long overdue. We need to audit the Federal Reserve, and I'm happy to say that that's, we're going to have a hearing on that very soon. The only way, really, America can get out of the current mess is you've got to shut the Fed down completely, get rid of the Fed. You've got to put the money printing mechanism back under the roof of the federal government instead of outsourcing it to the Fed. Why were the banks 